1982, this first ever hip hop tour came to London. Nobody knew what it was, so I went down to the hotel where they were staying in Victoria, near Victoria Station in London. I bumped into these girls, and I was like, oh, you guys, girls look fly, and took a picture of them. Turned out they were double dutch dancers, which I never, we didn't know what a double dutch dancer was. Then, you know, I bumped into these two guys, Futura and Dondi, two of maybe the most iconic graffiti artists ever of their era, for sure. And, you know, we're just hanging out and it's getting dark and they decide to tag this dumpster and they're doing these poses and I'm looking at the way they're dressed and what the way they're posing and the whole attitude is something I'd never seen before. I was really intrigued. It was really fascinating. very Christmas I ended up coming to visit a friend in New York. It was so crazy because all this stuff that I'd seen at this show was happening right in front of my eyes because you would get on the train, it was covered in art, graffiti, and you'd be walking down the street, kids break dancing on little pieces of cardboard, or some kid with a boombox walking along the street rhyming. It was a real, I could see it was a real street thing. I took a picture of BDP for their press, for a press release they were doing. They took me to the Bronx and introduced me to their, their BDP posse. I got this shot somewhere, I've got no idea where that was, but I would just go along with them. I had no idea if it was dangerous or not. But you know, a few weeks after I did that photo shoot, Scott LaRock was dead. Someone had shot him and I think he was trying to break up a fight because he used to work at a homeless shelter and got shot. And that seemed to happen a lot. People just disappearing. I was living here in New York by 1984. I sort of had moved here. And the Face magazine called me up and they were like, oh, there's this band from DMC. So, I got this person's phone number and it turned out to be Jam Master J and he says to me, meet me uh, by the subway in Hollis in Queens. So I just took a picture, maybe took six pictures, something like that. They're just hanging out on a nice day in a nice neighborhood, they've got a car, you know, this, this is the street they live on, their houses, their houses with backyards, they're not living in the bombed out Bronx. They're dressed, you know, pretty much like you could relate to. They weren't in a costume, like, shall we say, these guys that I'd shot the year before, the Fearless Four. You know, they're obviously dressed in a, you wouldn't walk on the street like this, probably not. They're dressed in something to perform in. I mean, this is a bunch of guys that everybody could relate to. And it really changed the whole dynamic and it let people who came from a middle class, more of a middle class background, be bona fide rappers and be able to tell their stories. Which is like another whole thing and it changed hip hop forever, in a way. In the early 80s, I went to LA and spent the summer there photographing um, an LA gang, an East LA gang.
And the scan is called the Oyo Maravilla, the HM gang. You know, they're like a part of another whole culture. And, you know, they adopted me and let me come every day to take portraits. And I was shooting with my Hasselblad. And what I'd done was I bought a box of pictures of punks and mods and skinheads with me, little eight by tens. I was like, these are the gangs of England. And I'm showing them to you. And I want to take your pictures back to UK and show them and let people see who you are and what you do. And they seem very cool with that idea. So, you know, and uh, one day they told a few of their girlfriends to come down there and I met these girls. They were just hanging out in the park. This was either 1982 or 1983. And last year I went to LA and I reconnected with these girls. I wanted to take a picture of them today. So here is the girls in the exact same lineup they were in 1982 or 83, and here they were last year, and they're still best friends, and they rehabilitate gang members. And so we're sitting around in the cafe talking, and we were discussing, telling stories and discussing what year it was, we couldn't remember. But they were like, well, what color was this car? And I was like, oh, I don't remember. And like, well, if it was blue, it was 82. And if it was gold, it was 83 because our friend was shot in the car, we had to repaint the whole car. This is, you know, this is really kind of amazing way to date something in a piece of history, but since it's only black and white, we don't really know.